Hi lovelies, I'm so excited to be making another large batch of freezer meals for our freezer to take us through the next month. And one thing I'm doing today is I did not buy all the lentils because I figured we had so many in our freezer. So I've already removed all those so that I can make space in my freezer. I can clean my freezer because it was looking horrible and save myself some money. So let me show you what we are cooking. So we have some beef here, two kilos. We want to make some slow cooker beef. I have three kilos of pork here. We'll just make some pork stew. I have one and a half kilos of minced beef and I am going to use that to make, to make a lasagna. And then here we have chicken that I'll make chicken curry. That's as far as the meats go. I have a plethora of vegetables that we have already chopped. For cooking everything conceivable but let me show you the treasures that i found in our freezer some of these have been in the freezer for months you guys and i normally i would just go and buy more but i think there's something to be said for shelf cooking just cook what is in your house if you can so i found quite a lot of lentils beans whatever we'll just see what i found okay So I found some dengue here. I actually found three bags of dengue. And then I have some cow peas. I have red lentils. I have beans. I found some green maize, which you can use to make it dairy. I found beans. And I also found yellow lentils. So I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to mix and match what to make what. But yeah, I'm glad I didn't buy more because these are enough for a meal. Let's get started, man. First of all, I want to say a huge thank you to one of my subscribers who gifted me this slow cooker. Whoop, whoop. Okay, you guys are awesome. And in particular, the lady I'm talking about, you know yourself. God bless you so much. So this is the first time that we're going to use it. And I'm going to make slow cooker beef. I have really been wanting one because one thing I've realized, the beef stew we've been buying from from KMC sometimes, it's a little bit too hard. And it's different from what we used to buy from the slaughterhouse. I don't know, I can't even explain how, but it's just the way it is, okay? So the first thing is I'm going to put this, and I'm excited because one thing I know about the slow cooker is that it makes everything softer and better. Also easier because honestly, I'm just dumping and going at this point in time. This is my first time ever in my life to use a slow cooker. So if you find me doing it wrong, <laughs> be kind and gentle and just tell me, okay? One thing I did find out is that they use quite a very large chunks of carrot. And that's good. Okay. And then I'm going to put some onions. All right. And then I'm going to make a mixture starter for to, to thicken our whatever, to thicken our soup. And then just before the beef is completely cooked, we are going to add some peas. These ones are already boiled. So we're going to put it to cook on high for four hours, but first let's make the soup base.
So I have my beef stock here. I'll put it in. The key is to just mix, mix until all the flour has dissolved. So this is ready. I want to put in some tomato paste and after that our seasonings of Worcestershire sauce, soy sauce, garlic, ginger, whole nine yards. Now that the beef is going, uh, I'm boiling this pork. I like to boil my pork first before I fry it. And I'll just add rosemary and water. That's enough. I'll dry until all the water has dried off. Then I need to make the chicken marinade because I need to marinate it for about an hour. And here is what I'm putting. I'll marinate it for one hour with turmeric, garam masala, the garlic and ginger paste that i've already made salt and the buttermilk or you can use yogurt As that is marinating away, let me start working on the vegetarian dishes because I've already prepared all the ingredients. It's just a matter of now heating my, putting on my four fires and starting to fry everything.
And by that, I'd like to note just how these freezer bags have held so well. Because some of these, let me just tell you guys, confession, some of these <laughs> have been in our freezer for quite a few months. And the freezer bags have held so well. And I'm going to link them in the pinned comment and in the description box below. Because we are going to wash them and we are going to reuse them. You can count on that. Sometimes people wonder why we always make sure that our freezer meal dishes have a lot of beans and pulses and lentils and legumes. I know those mostly mean <laughs> the two of the same things. But studies suggest that eating beans and lentils at least four times per week, by the way, helps to lower blood pressure and reduce the risk of heart diseases, type 2 diabetes, even prostate cancer. They are a healthy source of protein. They are affordable. They are so versatile. You can make so many dishes with them. And that's why I always make sure that at least four times a week, we are eating something vegetarian that includes these beans and lentils because it's such a great and healthy thing to eat one of the dishes i'm making is gideri and gideri is a kenyan dish the base of it is basically it has corn or maize and it has beans but i like to just fry it nicely with the nice vegetables onions courgettes peppers I like to add some green peas. You can add potatoes. You can even add meat. It's a really nice... I know people in the West would probably call it soup, but we call it a meal. Very filling and very delicious. As my food is simmering, it's time for me to tackle the deep freezer. Oh my goodness. There is now no condemnation, guys. Okay? Because... <laughs> oh, it is in quite a state... <laughs> Let me know how often you clean your deep freezer in the comment section down below and be honest, okay? Encourage a sister. What I did is I switched it off last night so it can throw. It can throw, so it can throw. <laughs> and now everything has melted and made a nice stew at the bottom, which is very disgusting. It's time for me to clean it. We normally keep our deep freezer in the laundry area, hence all the detergents that are up there. Yes. And if you are liking this content, please remember to give us a thumbs up. Guys, it means so much to this channel. I cannot overstate how important it is. Just that thumbs up, it really helps our channel to grow. For real, for real. I kid you not. Just that one thing. And if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. We love you. Now my first batch of dishes is ready. It's time for me to fry the pork. It has already boiled nicely and all the water has disappeared. And then I'll also fry the remaining beans and lentils. And as this is going, guys are hungry. It's time to make dinner.
for dinner we are going to have ugali another staple kenyan meal which is basically just corn flour and we're going to have it with the pork because that's ready now and greens yum and as that is getting ready i want to blend some tomatoes so that i can make my chicken masala with them basically if you haven't noticed the multi uh, <laughs> freezer meals cooking <laughs> calls for a lot of multitasking so yeah you just you know just do one thing as you're doing 10 other things yeah and you live to tell the story time to serve dinner as that chicken is going when it comes to finishing off the chicken masala i'm just frying now the rest of the ingredients and then i put the marinated chicken and later on some coconut cream delicious mm, yes as that is going don't worry i washed my hands before i served dinner <laughs> let me just say that and rewarded myself with this fantastic crust of ugali. Let me know if you're a fan of the ugali crust like me. Because what? I could fight you for that. I'll fight you for that crust. <laughs> beef stew is ready and so is the chicken masala remember i had to add uh, the peas at the very last minute of cooking these meals because we've already boiled the peas <music> And now, because my meals have cooled down somewhat, it's time for me to serve them into our freezer containers. And I've also come to realize that they cool faster when they're in smaller portions. And then once they're cooled, I'll put them in my sparkling clean freezer. And then I will cook one month from now. What? This is the life. We're done! Yes, this was a really effective afternoon. Actually, I just noticed that it took us exactly four hours to cook all this from the time we started. Because once we put the freezer meal, uh, the slow cooker to start, we set a timer for four hours. And by the time it was done, uh, everything was ready. So let me show you what we have. So here I have cow peas and I have two porks. I have four gideris. I have some chicken, our slow cooker beef, uh, which was interesting. <laughs> the slow cooker is quite slow. <laughs> Here I have more yellow lentils. I have these peas whose name I keep forgetting, the big, big ones. And I have dango. This is the one I mixed all the lentils that were left over. That's it. This is enough food to keep us going for the next one month. Yes. So that's how we do it here. If you'd like to see how we go about arranging this food in our freezer so that it can last us for six months, that's the video you should watch next right here.